What's up guys, this is Razor Scum here. Welcome to my Let's Play of Sam and Max Friends. Hit the Road. We've only gone out together three times, and already you're telling me you just want to be friends? You never gave me a chance, and for that, you'll fry like a pork sausage. Not that I don't like you, it's just that, well, you're too nice a guy, I guess. I think I'd rather go out with someone more of the unpredictable. This is the intro here, and we get to see our first heroes, you know, enter the scene. Hello. This doesn't look like the Lincoln Tunnel, Sam. Looks to me like a marginally volatile hostage situation, Max. Ooh, does this mean we get to kick some puffy white mad scientist butt? Can't think of a reason not to. <laughs> You'll be of no use, freelance police. With this is a really, really funny game. Believe me, this is one of the very, very best games I've ever played. And I'm giving you a treat here by letting you just watch this thing unfold. Uh, shall I confront, subdue, and pummel the suspected perpetrator, Sam? Sick him up, little buddy. Yeah. Ooh. Ow. Hey, um, nice one. This game's gonna be speaking a lot for itself oh. here. Um, yeah, He's I'm just gonna let guy, it roll Sam. on. Can I keep his head for a souvenir? What are you supposed to pick? <laughs> That's no head, Max. One damned ugly time bomb. Let's leave this criminal cesspool pronto. Good idea, Sam. Maybe we can ditch the head somewhere while the credits are running. Mind if I drive? Not if you don't mind me clawing at the dash and shrieking like a cheerleader. Sam, is pronto a real word? Goodbye, Sam and Max. I'll never forget all you've done here today. And just within that scene, right, let me just summarize everything that Sam and Max is about. Complete irreverence, a complete disregard for things, especially the little lady in the side. And yeah, here we get is here we have the fantastic uh, credit sequence. I remember playing this game a lot as a kid, and you know this was like this was actually quite spectacular. The soundtrack, the jazz, the um, you know the illustrations, the you know the buildings and the background, the road, you know, um, some of these illustrations are quite hilarious. Like you got the the Batman reference there. Um, there's another Star, like there's a Star Wars one coming up right right up. Um, not quite, not quite the next one, but it's somewhere in this credit sequence. But yeah, there's also. <laughs> Oh, there's also, you know, God versus man and that sort of thing, but yeah, this is, this is really, really good fun. This is, this is a fantastic game, one of my all-time favourites, um, yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, completely anarchic, maybe even absurdist, uh, you know, um, some, so, yeah, this is a Star Wars reference here, uh, has my name, call 1-800-STAR-WARS, um, yeah, and then there's the, you know, God versus Man, but, yeah, this is, this is just, this game is just jam-packed with detail, and I just cannot stress, you know, how, like, how awesome it is to just go over this game in detail, like, you know, um, there are a lot of adventure games out there where you just want to go and cut through it, but this game just rewards exploration and it rewards trying different things and just, you know, um, you know, clicking on different things to get random reactions, but, yeah. Well, that was so this a is the first playable part in the sequence. office, but, I enjoyed yeah. the cheesy retro ambiance. What the hell are you talking about, Max? Sam, either termites are burrowing through my skull, or one of us is ticking. Oops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Max, where should I put this so it doesn't hurt anyone we know or care about? Out the window, Sam. There's nothing <laughs> but strangers out there. I hope there was nobody on that bus. Nobody we know, at least. <laughs> Sorry, this, this game is too funny. Um, yeah. There's, there's just so much in this game yes. to love, and, yes. you know. Yes. No, really? Well, the same to you, Mac. Another confused census taker? 
Actually, it was the commissioner with another idiotic and baffling assignment. Does it involve wanton destruction? We can only hope. Due to the arbitrarily sensitive nature of the mission, we'll be meeting a bonded city courier out on the street. Ooh, smells like a fiercely thickening plot. Yes, sorry if I was, if I sounded a bit tight back there, but you know, this is just a game where um, there's just so much happening on in terms of the dialogue and the wit and the animation and everything that, you know, I have to just really, you know, take a back step to just let you guys come in and see it for, for what it is. Um, yeah, this is Sam and Max Hit the Road, um, one of the one of the finest games in um, LucasArts' um, category, and that includes, you know, Monkey Island and um, Day of the Tentacle, Full Throttle, you know, that's all in good company, but this is one of their very best adventures. Um, it was certainly the one that I enjoyed most as a kid. Um, you know, so... I guess to give a little backstory on who Sam and Max are, Sam and Max are actually the creation of Steve Purcell, who um, did a comic series based on them in the late 1980s, starting in 1987. Um, he later went on to become an artist at LucasArts, where he worked in several references to these characters within his games. So like, um, you know, in Monkey Island, The Secret of Monkey Island, um, outside the Monkey Temple, there is a little Sam and Max statue there. And um, in Monkey Island 2, in the uh, costume shop, you know, in the foreground, there is actually a Max costume. In the special edition of that game, it's actually replaced with Purple Tentacle from Day of the Tentacle, possibly due to copyright reasons. And also in Day of the Tentacle, there is actually a portrait in the um, 1700s uh, component of that game, which is actually a portrait of Max himself. But yeah, this was their full, blow their first full-blown adventure. Um, me, me, it was me. the only one from Lucas Arts before Telltale picked up the series years later. But, yeah, just gotta, <laughs> you know, watch that sandwich get picked up. Um, hey, this is weird. Puppet Pinocchio thing. Sometimes its eyes change. Yeah, there. So it's creepy. Um, yeah, let's grab this light bulb. And the rat there, that's actually like a recurring thing from the comics. Um, you know, the comics are really well known for just being jam packed with, you know, a lot of background detail. You know, um, there's a lot of pictures of cockroaches and rats, you know, just filling out the the hey, frames and you know, yeah we may need it to bribe slippery yeah. government officials yeah so in case you're wondering about the voices sam is voiced by none other than bill farmer of uh, you know disney um voice of goofy himself and nick jameson who was the voice of carl Katarn in the dark forces series i believe so let's just go and try no <laughs> try turning on the chat. telephone uh, uh, there's some gags later on, um, when you come back to this office, but yeah, we'll save them. Let's go and walk past Flint Paper. Joe, you want a piece of me, huh? Well, take a piece of this. Brutal. But very mm -hmm. true to life. And here's one for your old man. I really respect Flint's business acumen. Please, Sam, don't use the word acumen again. <laughs> so let's go and push this. Sure acts of sexual over. violence are my forte. You're such an adorable urchin, Max. <laughs> yeah, Max is kind of the sadist of the of the two. Um, Sam is always like the over-explanatory one. Kind of like overuses a lot of unnecessary, um, a lot of unnecessary wordplay is, you know, used by Max. Um, sorry, Sam. Um, I do remember you know, reading the comics once, and they get a phone call, and Sam picks up the phone, and you know, says yes, 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 and um, Max asks him who who it was, and then Sam says, you know, 
It was a call from someone claiming to be the commissioner who sounded exactly like the commissioner and I think actually was the commissioner. That's the kind of humour that's in there. Um, there was, oh, what was one of my other favourite ones? Um, there's one where they go into the office and they turn on the TV and Sam's like, holy cripes on toast, it's Citizen Kane in colour. Oh wait, it's the Flintstones. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, this is, it's a really funny series. If you haven't checked out the, if you if you haven't checked out the comics, I do recommend that you check them out, um, especially if you love this game as much as I do. Um, so we're going to be meeting a bonded city, Korea, out on the street. Um, that's that's kind of the effect that this game has had on me. Like, you know, it's quite easy for me to just slip into the lines of dialogue without thinking. But here we have our city, hey there, Korea. Fella. You talking to me? All right. So. Unlike Day of the Tentacle, where you get the traditional questions, um, you have these icons. So there's a question, a statement, and a non sequitur. So Maybe. we'll go are for you a question first. Bonded city courier? Maybe. Are you the freelance police? Yes, but don't go blabbing it to everybody. I think he's kind of cute, Sam. Can I make a tennis racket out of him? Maybe later, Max. Right now, we've got a message from the commissioner to collect. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry guys, I swallowed your orders for safekeeping. But now I can't seem to hock them back up. So, um, yeah, there's a little gag there about the um, tennis racket. Make a tennis racket out of him. Um, so that's a reference up to the fact that uh, tennis rackets used to be made out, made out of cat gut, which didn't really contain cat gut. I believe it was just some kind of cow intestine. But, yeah. It's an example of the hey there, clever wordplay you that's there. Don't get smart Let's with me, Bob. a statement. Now my partner will floss every last crevice on his body with your whiskers. That's unsanitary, Sam. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, here's one of my favorite ones. It's a cute ones. little kitten. He's adorable. Let's take him home and put tape on his feet. <laughs> Yeah. Hey there, little fella. Um, you talking to me? Your head is disturbingly disproportionate to your body. It's a vocal cord. You'd be amazed how much room they take up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just too much to appreciate in this game. All right, so yeah, the cat has followed the orders for safekeeping, and there's no way for us to get them out of him except. Hey there, little fella. I just love to turn this guy inside out. Ooh, that gives me an idea. <laughs> According to these orders, something bizarre is happening at the carnival. I thought that was the whole point. Maybe we should check it out when we've got nothing better to do, like any time. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we've got the orders there. Let's have a look at these pigeons. Hey, little Just pigeons. a bunch of intoxicated pigeons. Ah, here's one of my favorite bits. Hey, I don't think Mr. Bosco is voluntarily giving away his money. Oh, I'm real terrified. A dog and a rabbit. Ooh, scary. Max, the smart-ass kid doesn't think we're scary. What do you think about that? That's telling him, little buddy. <laughs> I think that punk learned a valuable lesson, Sam. Me too, Max. I didn't realize that the lower lip could stretch completely over the head. Amazing. <laughs> Alright, so now we'll go into this car. 